All right, you guys, so I had you read one of the selections from Teddy Roosevelt, and as you saw in the mini bio, he was a larger than life figure. Um, he did a lot of really good things. He um, helped preserve a lot of national lands, and um, he uh, formed the Rough Riders, um, who were you know, heroes overseas, and he was a, sort of a national hero, a national wartime hero. Um, he also created the Monroe Doctrine, which was basically gave us the the right to intervene in international politics for the first time um, and sort of set us up to become essentially the global superpower we became after World War One. Um, he also broke with the monopolies, so uh, I've, I want to tie him back to the different things that we've seen. Um, you've ever, if you've ever heard of the Gilded Age, Mark Twain coined that phrase. Um, the Gilded Age was the late 1800s, the very last, uh, the last 10, 20 years. And what it was was this idea that um, American prosperity was for essentially the one percent, um, the, the the big millionaires who had the monopolies and who had the control of everything. So Vanderbilt, um, uh, J.P. Morgan, all these different Rockefeller, um, these people were the ones who had everything, and it looked like America was built on this ideal of of equality and freedom and and inclusion, but really it was just, it's just a guild. So it was just a fake gold, you know, fake cover on the harsh reality. And so think, people like Sinclair um, helped show this reality and Zig Kalasan and all these different people. So I had you read Roosevelt to kind of tie all of this together. Um, and if you notice Roosevelt in the section you read, he has this incredibly strong, powerful, almost very, very, very masculine language that he ties to the concept of an American, a truly American identity. So he was the first, um, as you heard in the video, the first really modern American president. And he set us up, 1901 to 1909, for essentially what's going to become our identity during and after World War I um, as this, you know, this sort of uh, global superpower, which is kind of his hands in a lot of different pies. And um, so I really want you to notice the language that he uses, it's, it, and it, this was very much true of Roosevelt's personality himself. He was a go-getter, he was a fighter, he was a man of action rather than words necessarily. Um, not that he wasn't a great speaker, but he really was all about this, what he calls the spirit of adventure. So I want you to kind of notice how he's building on some precedents from American history to create this argument for what it is to be quote-unquote American. Um, so he talks about the settling of the West and how the men who settled the West, the frontiersmen, were the, the true heroes of, of American history. Um, and he says, you know, the men who founded, on 1141, the men who founded these communities showed practically uh, by their life work that this is indeed the spirit of adventure, which is the maker of commonwealth. So he's saying we as Americans, this is, you know, post-Manifest uh, Destiny, just post Manifest Destiny, we've just now in 1896, um, uh, or 1902, I'm sorry, had the West closed for only 10 years. Um, so he, he's really praising the spirit of adventure and ingenuity and, and um, not giving up as part of the American identity. And that is something that we still have ingrained in us as quote unquote Americans today. Um, and he says the action of the West, the, the resettlement of the West, what is what it means to be a true American. He uses words like, note the words adventurous and um, uh, winning and victory and hardy, grim, resolute. Everything is about fighting and, and it's, and it's conflict-based and it's overcoming difficulties and pulling yourself up by bootstraps. And that's the kind of uh, American ideal that we still have today that if you are if you work hard enough if you if you try hard enough if you have enough um, chances that you really make for yourself you can pull yourself up and become anything you want to be um, and there's a lot of political debate about whether or not that's true but he really worked for this idea of this middle class where you can bring yourself up from the from poverty no matter who you are um, and he talks also in 1140 when he talks about um, he brings in some of these conflicts that we've had and he's kind of glosses over them very interestingly. You know, he calls, he says, the, the white top wagons went across the leagues of Indian haunted desolation. So Indian haunted, he's basically invoking the language of conflict between Native Americans and the frontier settlement. And he's, he's kind of casting the Native Americans a little bit as, as 
a negative force. So it has that, that, that language in it. And I want you to just be wary of things like that. Um, so the section I didn't have you read before, also he talks about immigrant life and immigrant culture and basically argues for the assimilation that, that America should be built on multiculturalism and different ideas, but that all immigrants, he says, should, when they come in, should assimilate to this American ideal, the American identity. They should leave behind you know, their other cultures and religions and languages and be American. So take from that what you will. Um, but this is kind of the ideal that he's proposing. And so I want you to know that all of this he ties to this idea of national character in the very bottom 1141. Um, and he says, these men should be the inspiration and appeal for our national character. And it's the first time we have somebody, not the first time, but it's the first time we really have a president speaking of what it means to be this American ideal um, in these terms. And so he says, we live now in softer times. So he was very much, he was a hardy outdoorsman. He was a uh, survivalist. He went on safari. I mean, big game hunter. He 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 says we live in basically these, these floof, floofy, soft times that men are becoming soft. We need to make men men again. And he doesn't mean just men, but he means, he, he brings in women, what, he, what he calls womanliness too. Um, but he's saying we need to get back to this rugged, frontiersman mentality to, to make America, um, you know, what it, what it should be. And so he says, any man who doesn't do all of these things has forfeited all right to our respect. And so this ideal of respect is very important. And that's something that we have in American society, this ideal of respecting um, other people and respecting the, the sort of the class system and the higher you are in the class system quite often, you know, the more money and respect you, you tend to garner from people. And it's, 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 you know, it's, it's an issue that we still have today. Um, and, um, you know, so he said, he, he casts this as a good ideal, but, I'm, you know, it's up to you whether or not it is. Um, but he says we, we need all these equalities that go with what he calls true manhood. And he says these are virtues of resolution, courage, and indomitable will. So you cannot be beaten. No matter how many times somebody knocks you down, you get up and you try again. Um, and so he also in, goes down and he invokes um, some incredibly important figures. He invokes Washington and he invokes Lincoln. And so you have the founding father and you have the man that helped create our national identity during the Civil War with equality for all, and, well, supposedly equality for all, freedom for all. And he says these are what helps create the mighty federal unit. So again, notice that language, that language of the conqueror. Um, and he says they, don't, they didn't do this by seeking self-ambition, by being callous in their disregard for others, or by contempt of the moral law. So he's saying you as a, as a person, you have to have respect for other people, so respect for other cultures. Um, you have to, you know, you can't disregard the law to be an upstanding citizen, and you can't have, you can't be immoral. Um, and he says these things will not make you a true American citizen. And so he says the last things we need are civic and social decency and honesty. And this is sort of a call to a political system, a social system. And he's saying we should be honest, forthright, upstanding people. Manly, manliness and womanliness is what he says for the individual and the family. Um, and, and it's interesting that he invokes men and women in that sense because it is almost a, a call for a type of equality. I wouldn't say complete equality, but, you know, we have the, the vote for women in about 20 years. Um, so it is interesting. It's kind of a precursor if you want to think of it in that way. Um, so I just wanted you guys to read this to kind of really get an understanding of where this bravado and this invocation of, uh, you know, strength and, and ingenuity and uh, this, you know, masculine energy that often comes uh, in, in conversations of American ideals, um, you know, kind of comes from, in a lot of ways, Roosevelt. Um, so uh, if you will go ahead and move on now, I want you to, you have one activity and then you're going to move on to your essay.